Hey guys, welcome back to interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with the patch 5.1 B tier list and it's been a long while since we've done a tier list so there's been a lot a lot of changes um like of course we have a lot of champion changes we have like the the hex flash change which is gonna affect a lot of things we have a lot of item changes new champions like i think like uh, we haven't done one since talon so we have Callista in the tier list now we have viego in the tier list now you know all that sort of good stuff but first before i get into the tier list um right here you guys will have noticed that I haven't really been releasing videos daily anymore and that's because I'm now pretty busy. Um, so I don't think we'll be doing daily uploads anymore. We'll try to do once every two days if possible, but otherwise, you know, whenever we can, uh, you know, we'll just um, get the videos in. So let's start off with the top lane. So top lane, one of the big changes that happened is the removal of Hullbreaker. So that definitely did lower the power of some champions, but at the same time, it kind of didn't really affect things all that much either. So first things first, let's start off at the top. So Urgot is a champion that I've heavily, heavily underrated. Previously, I put him, I think, in like the A plus tier or the A tier previously, but um, he's gotten very, very popular uh, out of the blue, and people have basically realized that he's actually a really strong champion. So the main thing that he brings to the table is he's not only really tanky, but he does a really decent amount of DPS. So he is probably the best uh, top lane champion now really really um, popular and then we of course have set who is of course still just really good with the heart steel um and stuff and i put gwen uh, up there in like third place basically just because if i take a look at the tier list uh be basically other than gwen all of the the best top laners are all tanks so gwen kind of just counters um you know tanks so she's just up there Orn, of course, has always been a very solid tank, very solid CC, very, very tanky, um, decent amount of damage as well. And Sion, I still think, is very good, but I've just dropped him down a notch because of the loss of Hullbreaker. But the same playstyle of split pushing um, on Sion still just works. It's just a little bit worse without the Hullbreaker, but Sion is still incredibly tanky and that playstyle still works, so he is still really strong. And then we have Volibear and Mundo, which in my opinion are... A little bit like Urgot, but just a little bit of a worser version in, in a way. Because they both are really just tanky, um, you know, as well. But I think that Urgot's just consistent DPS is just better, whereas definitely Mundo is more geared towards the, the, the tankier side and doesn't do as much damage. Volibear does um, do damage, but I just felt that Urgot is just better. So Garen, we've dropped down from the S plus tier to the S tier. Simply because there's just a lot of better champions than him right now, and I only want to keep the S plus tier to five champions, maximum whenever possible. So, uh, other champions like Camille and Jax, who are split pushers, um, still stay in the S tier without the Hullbreaker. Camille never really built Hullbreaker that much anyway. I think uh, Jax and Fiora definitely did, um, and Jax still can do the job. But it's, again, it's just a little bit worse. Same like Sion and Fiora as well. So I've dropped Fiora down um, a tier. Actually, so mages in the top lane can be pretty good, like like uh, Vladimir, Gragas, etc. Because mage itemization are just completely insane after the light and the ruin update. But I think that tanks in the top lane are still the best. Although mages kind of have a free pass to scale, so mages are really good as well. Uh, another notable change I want to point out is Teemo. So Teemo, with the mage itemization, is actually no longer really such a troll pick. Like last time... People mostly thought Teemo was pretty bad. He is not amazing now, but I actually think that you can carry games on Teemo, and Teemo is actually pretty decent. So I've actually put Teemo at the bottom of the A plus tier with all of the new uh, items like Rift Maker. Not they're not new, but they they've been upgraded in a way they're like Rift Maker, Infinity Orb, and items like that. Teemo damage is kind of just insane. Like with Leandris and such, uh, yeah, Teemo damage is actually just insane. So he might even be higher than A plus tier, but I'm being a little bit conservative here. Uh, putting him in the A plus tier, but uh, with Baronin out the way, let's talk about the jungle. So the jungle, obviously, um, you can see lots of uh, lots of changes. Um, we've had the addition of Viego as well as Kindred, so we're gonna talk about those first. The, the S plus tier pretty much remains the same, except the the order has been shuffled a little bit. We move Kane back and put Viego in. Now I think Viego was actually balanced on release. Um, except that maybe his health gain from uh, possessing a soul was not really that high. But in the latest patch, Rad decided to pretty much buff everything about Viego. And of course, as we know with any new champion, that's pu that puts him over the 
um, the threshold and he's now just OP as well. Now I'm only putting him, I'm putting him behind like Kha'Zix and Lee Sin because I think Kha'Zix and Lee Sin can carry games harder in the sense that if they get fed early game, they can snowball um, the game where it's, it's kind of difficult for Viego to get fed early game because he's not exactly a strong early game. He is actually kind of a strong early game champion but not as strong as, as Lee Sin and, and Kha'Zix and you kind of need your team to kind of help you um, out as Viego to kind of get fed and when you're fed, you know, you're just insane with all of your resets, your untargeted ability, and your possessions. But if you fall behind, uh, you are completely useless as Viego. Like, I think uh, maybe a Lee Sin who's behind at least has some kind of utility with his kick and stuff. Whereas if you're behind as a Viego, the only way you can really do anything is if your whole team dog piles onto the most fed member of the enemy team and you get the possession of that fed member of the enemy team and then you use their body to carry the game, basically. So... In the S tier, we have a lot of changes as well. So first up, we have uh, Lilia and Echo, both of which have been buffed a lot. And with the new mage itemization, uh, mages are really strong in the game in general. You can see Evelyn still in the S plus tier, because I still think she's the best mage who can just one-shot people 100 to 0 after like 2-3 items. Lilia is really, really um, um, strong now. The poison damage is insane. The just general damage of Lilia is insane. But she is really, really hard to play, because you do have to space very, very well. But... Um, you know, if they're good Lilia players, um, they can make use of her very well, and she is very strong. Now, Kindred is still very strong, but has been taken down a notch by the rounds of nerfs that she has gotten. Um, of course, Kindred is a whole different kind of champion, because you do have that mark system that you have to play around, and most people still can't play around it very well, and teams can't play around it very well, because you do have to help your Kindred to invade, you do have to help her defend marks, things like that, but teams are not even doing that. In fact, some teams are even stealing the camps that are marked, which is yeah it kind of works against kindred but um but yeah she is still really strong talent also just a really strong assassin um he has gone a few rounds on nerves but he is still incredibly strong uh just that you know other assassins like Lee Sin and Kha'Zix are just simply better um than talent in my opinion um Echo as mentioned uh mage animization really strong and really strong of an assassin as well we've moved uh shuffled around quite a lot of the S tier champions as well Xin Zhao I've moved up by a ton because recently you we have that new like uh Yomu's ghost blade uh into Triforce kind of Xin Zhao with first strike that basically just one shots people and Xin Zhao is one of the strongest early game junglers so with that kind of snowball kind of um build and setup uh, what happens in a lot of games is you just snowball off of the early game and you just one-shot people, um, you know, even with just one item. And it's just no counterplay to that. And if you get fed that way, it just sort of works. So, Vi and Jarwin, I've actually moved them down a tad because although I still think they're incredible junglers, I think that they're, they are a little bit team-reliant. In the sense that Vi and Jarwin are generally not going to 100 to 0 someone unless you build full lethality. But other than that, you do need some kind of follow-up from your, from your team. I think that they are completely OP so long as your team is able to just do anything, get any kind of damage onto them. Uh, but if not, they, they, it's going to kind of be awkward when you go in and the enemy is not going to die because your team does not follow up. So Master Yi got his mini re rework already. And with that, he is honestly a lot stronger with the the um the auto attack resets on the W and the E as well as now in the latest patch getting the 90% damage reduction for half a second regardless. A good Master Yi player can definitely um make him work. Um the issue in Master Yi is that uh this no matter how strong he is, his weakness is always gonna be CC, and that should always be the case. Uh he should always have that obvious weakness. So in matches where he's bad in, like the enemy team has a lot of CC, he's still going to be bad in, but in matches that he's good in, he's now just even better. So I think A plus tier is a fair, um, you know, placement for Master Yi. He's not that amazing, but he's not horrible either. But of course, he is very frustrating to play against. But with uh, that, the rest of the tier list more or less remains the same. Some champions who have gotten changes like Graves, don't think it affects him all that much. Uh, but with that, let's move on to the mid lane. Okay, so in the mid lane, it's pretty much a mid, uh, a mi mage meta, with the exception of the Wind Brothers, which we'll get into in a little bit. Now, I think that mages are just completely busted to the point that they're also OP. That, um, they all just populate the S plus and and the S tier and and uh, and yeah, because I mean mage items are so strong. Most mages start with like Ludens, right? Then they can go for, of course, your. Um, your inf your ruined infinity orb, your ruined death cap. Or actually, it's not even ruined. It's light infinity orb. Your ruined death cap. Your horizon focus. Um, items like that. It's just completely OP in a sense that, 
like ADCs only really get IE, for example. Like they, that's the only like special item they get. Tanks get you know twin guard things like that. But mages can build multiple of these uh, light slash ruin items, which is really kind of unbalanced when you compare it to the rest of the cast. But anyways, I think Syndra is actually the best mage at the moment, and the reason why I say that is. I have never seen a good Syndra player. I, as an, I've never seen a great Syndra player. I've seen some good Syndra players, but I've never seen someone that's like great. Like I see so many Syndra players that can't land their balls. Um, you know, they, they use their E and it doesn't hit you, or they out a target who's already dead, or they out a target who's full health, uh, things like that. And I already think Syndra's damage is insane. I already think Syndra is strong. Now, if imagine if there is an amazing Syndra player, I think that she would just be completely, completely OP. So I think that she's probably the best. And then we have like uh, Akali as well as Zoe who can basically just one-shot people. And we even have Vladimir who now can just one-shot people as well but with the additional safety of the pool. And he doesn't build like tanky anymore, he goes for like full damage and just one-shots people. Um, the Wind Brothers are actually very strong now as well. Yasuo has the additional uh, benefit of being able to go the tank build. But both of them now have um, uh, items like Bork that's really OP on them as a first item. They have of course the option to go for IE because of the way that their crit scaling works. And then basically the the after the Wind Brothers, like other than Zed, the rest of them are pretty much just mages like Diana, um, Kalarina, Echo, Lux, all just one shots people. Zix uh, is a really interesting one as well. Makes very good use of Horizon Focus and but does take a little bit of time to, to get going. So he is a little bit further back because he doesn't really get kills in the early game and doesn't really snowball. He kind of just has to wait for uh, two, three items before he just re suddenly becomes completely OP with his poke. And then of course the rest of the mages are Vex, uh, Kassadin. Um, you know, etc. And even bleeds down to A plus tier with uh, champions like Oriana and Fizz, also really, really strong. Some notable uh, uh, changes other than that is uh, I've moved Aso up from C tier to A plus tier because even though um, I don't think he's that great, um, he is really OP in the late game, uh, especially, but he takes a lot of time to scale. So in the early game, he's not very strong at all. So he's, yeah, not that good uh, until you reach mid to late game. I've moved up Annie and Twisted Fate because of the Hex Splash changes, because you can Hex Splash uh, Tibbers or Hex Splash Gold Card, which makes them actually a lot stronger than what they were. And then, um, other than that, we also have like Talon, it's still in the A plus tier. Uh, he is a relatively new champion, so I just thought I'd point that out. And yeah, so uh, aside from that, we can move on to my favorite part, the ADCs. Okay, so now moving on to ADCs, my recording software actually crashed. So I actually had to have to re-record, um, you know, this part uh, of the video onwards. But uh, here we go again. So um, I believe that Kaisa and Tristana are still the best ADCs, which is not exactly a very popular um, opinion. Uh, but I think that good Tristanas can snowball in the uh, in like pretty much every game because they are really really strong in the early game and basically just take over games from there. Kaisa, one of the most um, versatile ADCs in terms of build, she can build like on hit now. She can build of course crit and more towards an assassin style as well and also AP. We're doing a, a uh, AP Kaisa video really soon, but I still think Kaisa is really really strong and Varus um, now uh, steps up from the S tier to the S plus tier as well. Uh, I think his best build is probably on hit, but he can also build like, you know, lethality, AP, crit, and uh, things like that, and mixes of them as well. So, uh, Varus is really strong as well. Damage is really high, um, so he is there as well. We have uh, Zaya, who who um, got a huge buff in patch 5.1, and I think that she is not that good into teams that don't want to run into her because she, her, a lot of her power budget is in her feathers so because of that she's not gonna be able to pull back and get that the power from from the feathers but in teams into teams that want to run into her she's basically the best adc you can play better than kaisa tristana varus and everybody else so as a fair ranking i'm gonna put her at the bottom of the s plus tier guys there's situations where she's amazing in but some that she's not as good in even though she's not as good in, she still is a pretty decent uh, adc just with her auto attacks without her feathers so uh, and her ulti for safety things like that Samira is a little bit similar, where into teams with heavy CC, it's kind of unplayable, but into teams with little to no CC, she is gonna just take over and roll over the enemy team. Then we have Lucian, who I think is actually good enough to be S plus tier, but because we're limiting uh, the tier list to uh, 5 S plus tier champions at the maximum, we're gonna leave Lucian in the S tier. Uh, press the attack, um, the new rune is is really really good on Lucian and I think we can now conclusively say that it is better than Kraken Slayer because although it's single target, you should be focusing on single target first anyway, you shouldn't be switching targets in fights if you can help it. Um, 
and uh, it does a, a lot of damage and Lucian procs it very easily and uh, he can just burst people down um, as he always could um, so he's just really strong now and then of course we have the new addition of Callista so Callista is a really interesting one because honestly I think she's S plus tier worthy but she has her her mechanics of tying to a support holding her back her early game damage is insane, she can duel a Draven in the early game which just shows you how strong her early game is but like Draven she falls off in the late game but the main thing holding her back is her W and R. So her W of course requires a support to attack someone, you and your support to attack the same target to proc the mark which some supports don't even know and uh, of course you have your ulti where you suck your support in and you can throw them back out or they can throw themselves back out to knock people up. And the real issue with Callista is her power budget is a lot. Um, to do with her interactions with her support and if you play Callista in solo queue you can of course get good supports like I have before uh, we have videos of that on the channel um, so you can have good supports who know what they're doing and know how to play for Callista but you can of course have bad supports as well who don't know what they're doing don't know how to play because it doesn't even know what Callista does things like that and it's basically unplayable because you've lost a lot of your power you know and of course you can also play supports like Nami or Jen who don't even want to be thrown in to the enemy team and then you're just in trouble from the get go. So yeah, so I think Kalista is a good champion but will never really be past the, the S tier, never really S plus tier material in my opinion. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the A tier champions. I moved Sivir down because I think her early game is simply too weak. She gets destroyed by every champion in the early game. And uh, it's pretty much a free lane where, when you're laning against a Sivir, but she only gets good in the mid to late game in team fights, especially where her, her damage output really shines. Vayne's still stuck in the A tier because her niche has kind of been attacked um, with the addition of Terminus and uh, be making on hit build so strong and just being able to be built in general. A lot of ADCs are amazing tank striders compared to what they were before. Like you can build on hit on Kai'Sa, Varus, even Lucian. We're going to do an on hit Lucian video soon. Uh, and of course, champions like Tristana and and uh, Zaya can still build Terminus as well. So, uh, yeah, the niche is kind of just gone. Uh, for Not gone, but it's a lot weaker for Vayne, so it, even less of a reason to pick Vayne. MF hasn't been re uh, reworked yet, and uh, Twitch, I honestly think, is the worst ADC to play right now. He, he does do insane damage at all stages of the game, but... Uh, he is so squishy that I really don't think it's worth the effort uh, when you can play something like Jinx who's a lot safer or, or Zeri who's a little less squishy uh, you know, as a hyper carry instead of Twitch. But yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on ADC. Now let's talk about the last section support. Okay, so for support, actually we've honestly had the least amount of changes here. I still think Karma, Pike, uh, Lux are probably just the best support because uh, of course we have Karma and Lux who can build complete AP one shot or can build supportive. Now you can even build like tech builds on them, uh, which have been rising in popularity a little bit. And Pike, of course, just an insane champion if you're good at him with all of the catches, the stuns, you know, the stealth, the executes, things like that. And then we have uh, pretty much a lot of enchanters. We have Lulu, Soraka, Yumi. I think are are all amazing. Um, but Yumi is just a step down because of course in in uh, solo queue, uh, you're really really reliant on you know, your ADC being good, and that's a little bit of a risk. Uh, honestly, it's kind of similar for, for Lulu or Soraka, but Lulu and Soraka is just a little bit more useful if your ADC is trash, because you can buff a lot of people. Yumi, you can still do that as well, to be honest, but yeah, Lulu and Soraka, I think, are just a little bit better. I think best engage, uh, of course, is still Rakan. Um, Leona is really, really good. Uh, best pure engage support tank kind of champion um, in the game, in my opinion. Uh, of course, Hexflash has made her better, as has... Uh, it's made better all of the engaged champions as well, like Nautilus, Alistar, Thresh. I've moved Thresh up to the top of A plus tier from the bottom side of A plus tier because I've seen a lot of Threshes use Hexplash very well and um, you know they know how to play Thresh you know really good. Um, of course, Nautilus and Alistar still are made better by Hexplash, but I, I you know I could move them up to where Thresh is to be honest, but. Um, I think Thresh is just a little bit better than, than the two of them, so I decided to separate them with the, the other champions in the middle, like Janna, who's a really good counter pick, and uh, you know Braum, who's a really good counter pick. Ash is just really uh, quite a good champion as well. If you're uh, like, for example, ADC auto filter to support, and uh, Ash has a lot of utility, but um, can't really be picked in every team comp just because of the squishiness and what uh, you need from your support. But the majority of the support tier list actually honestly just remains the same. Uh, just a little bit of movement um, with uh, Leona, Thresh, and I, I, and, uh, I think Yumi moves uh, above Rakan, but things like that. It's pretty much the same. 
uh, least amount of changes in all of the roles. But with uh, that, we've come to the end of our cheerlist. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and goodbye.